Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be addressing a viewer question on one of our old videos, and it's about a topic that, frankly, I glossed over for all these years, and I think it's time to jump back into it. Let's take a look at that question. Magnus Peel 6974 writes, looking forward to that future video on EMI for six layer stack ups. Well, guess what, Magnus? We're gonna do it today. We're gonna go over all of the things that can affect EMI and EMC in six layer stack ups, and I'm gonna show you a cool example in Ultium Designer. Let's go ahead and get started. So, since we're talking about six layer PCBs and EMI, of course, most of those problems are created and solved in the stack up. So let's take a look at the two common PCB stack ups that would be used to support high speed digital or a mix of digital and RF. So first things first, in these PCB stack ups, we of course have our top layer, which is normally signal. We then also have a bottom layer, which is generally used for signal. We then have an internal layer, which is gonna be ground. And then we have another internal layer, which is also ground. So this is starting to look a lot like a four layer stack up. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more here momentarily. Then we have our internal layers. And our internal layers are typically allocated in two possible ways. First of all, we can have signal and signal in this PCB stack up. So we basically have four total signal layers. Two of those signal layers are basically adjacent to each other. We can also have one of these layers be solely dedicated to power. So this is really the first type of stack up where you start to see power arising as a dedicated layer. Now, of course, I've brought up some examples in four layer boards where you can have a dedicated power layer. That tends to be in cases where you have something with a digital section as well as the need for high current in the board. But in a lot of digital systems, you will see this type of stack up because you need to have a dedicated power layer because you may have multiple voltages all carrying different levels of current. So for example, this power layer could be dedicated to you know, 3v3, 1v8, and then if you have a larger processor, you could also have 1v2, 1v0, and so on and so forth. So you could have a lot of different rails all allocated to this same power layer. Those rails could also exist on these top and bottom layers as well. So now let's just back up for a moment to the signal and signal case on the internal layers. And let's discuss some of the issues where EMI might arise and how we can solve it. The first way that we deal with some of the EMI issues that could arise is with selecting the thicknesses of the dielectric. So you'll have a thinner layer out here on the top layer. And this could be, for example, as small as four mil for a lot of conventional builds. Same thing down here if we're enforcing symmetry, this one might also be four mil. Then you have to pick the thicknesses of the dielectrics in these internal layers. So how do we do that to ensure that we have consistent impedance everywhere for the internal signals, as well as deal with things like crosstalk and help reduce radiated emissions and EMI susceptibility? Well, what we would like to do is also ensure that we have strong coupling between these signals and this ground plane. And so to do that, we would also use a thin layer internally. This one could also be, for example, four mil. And then again, because of symmetry, we would then also set this dielectric to four mil. Then we would have a thicker core in the very middle of the board. And that thick core allows some separation between these signals. First, having the thick core between these signals increases the distance between them, which will reduce the magnitude of any crosstalk between a signal on this layer and a signal on this layer. So that's advantageous for signal integrity. The other thing it does is it forces this signal to be closer to this ground, which then reduces EMI susceptibility. The other thing that it does is it reduces the magnitude of radiated emissions. So for example, if you happen to encounter impedance discontinuities during routing in this layer, by having this signal layer closer to ground, the magnitude of those discontinuities can be reduced and that reduces radiated emissions. Now, if we have it here on this layer, because we have symmetry in the stack up, we would get the same benefit here on this layer. We'd also have lower radiated emissions from this layer when we make this layer thinner and have this thick core between our two signal layers. So we've looked at the case where we have our two signal layers internally, but what about the case where we have signal on layer three 
and then power on layer four. How should we set up the dielectrics in that case? Well, again, we should have a thinner outer layer because of course, coupling these signals close to ground is going to help reduce their radiated emissions. So this could be as small as, for example, four mils in conventional builds. Again, we could have four mil down here for symmetry reasons. Internally, we would actually want to do the same thing as in the signal and signal case. We would want to have a thin layer here, for example, again, four mil, and maybe again, also here, four mil. And then we could have a thicker core here in the very center. Now, why would we want to do this? Does it really matter if we put a thick layer here versus a thick layer here? If the power layer is totally uniform and there are no splits at all in that power layer, it actually isn't going to matter so much if you put a thick layer here between two and three, or if you put the thick layer here between three and four. However, in a lot of digital systems, you don't actually have a single uniform power layer here. A lot of times, as I mentioned earlier, you have multiple rails on that power layer. You could have your 3v3, your 1v8, and so on and so on. You could have all of those rails clustered into that single power layer. And of course, they're all gonna be on different pieces of copper. And so if I'm routing on this signal layer, I am at some point likely to route over a split in the copper on the power layer in layer four. This is why we would want to have a thick core between the signal layer on layer three and the power layer on layer four. By having a thicker dielectric here in the very center of the stack up, that's going to ensure that coupling to the signals is stronger back to the ground on layer two than it is to these power regions on layer four. That is also going to help ensure that we have low EMI susceptibility. And if we do happen to route over a split in the power region, that is also going to help reduce those radiated emissions. Now, if we do route over a split in the power region, there are a few things that could happen. We can have that impedance discontinuity that can lead to radiated emissions, and you might have somewhat higher EMI susceptibility via the edge of the PCB. How much of a problem this becomes really depends on the edge rate of those signals on layer three. Let's take a look at an example in Altium Designer of a six layer board. This six layer board has high speed and low speed signals on it. And I'm gonna show you an example of what to do with those high speed signals when you're routing them on layer three in this type of stack up. So here I am inside of Altium Designer and we're gonna take a look at an example of an ethernet switch. Now this ethernet switch you can see in 3D has a two by six a set of RJ45s on it. We have access here through a serial port and then we have an uplink port here. We also have an SFP port right here for a fiber connection. We have a lot going on and it is done on six layers. Now let's take a look at the stack up here because what happens on those inner layers is gonna be important for determining some aspects of EMC. So here I have the stack up open and you can see here that I've taken the approach that I talked about on the whiteboard. So that's having this thick inner layer as my core. So you can see here my core is 0.855 millimeters, and then we have thinner outer layers of prepreg and core in order to form this six layer stack up. Here, we've also taken the approach with top and bottom being signal, then layer two and layer five are ground, and then we have layer three and layer four dedicated to power and signal respectively. We've taken that approach in order to ensure that we have enough space for routing, but because this is a large digital board, we need to have those large rails for power and that's why we have a dedicated power layer in this stack up. So now let's take a look at some of the routing. What signals do we have in this design? So as I mentioned, this is of course an ethernet switch with a fiber connection. So we do have a Surtees connection going to the fiber connector. And then we do have a lot of ethernet lines going over to all of those RJ45 ports. And so you can see here on the top layer where our ethernet routing is, you can see it's all of these differential pairs right here going to those RJ45 jacks. We also have ethernet routing on the bottom layer, also going over to those RJ45 jacks. Now, if we look here in 3D, we also have something else on this board. And if I zoom in right here, you can see what it is. U5 is a DDR chip. So we have DDR on this board as well. And this DDR chip provides memory for this large processor here in the middle of the board. So where is our DDR routing? Our DDR routing is actually split between two layers because Frankly, that's the only way you can get all of those traces onto this board to route over to that DDR chip. So here we have some of the DDR routing on the top layer, but then we also have some of the DDR routing in an internal layer. And so you can see here, we have some of this DDR routing shown right here in this cutout region 
on layer four. How do we do this to ensure that we don't have impedance discontinuities and radiated emissions from all of this routing? Well, what we've done, if we look at layer three, is we have a solid power region on layer three above that DDR routing. You see here, if I turn off all of the layers except three and four, you can see that all of this DDR routing is done over a solid power region. We're not routing over any splits in that power region. And that's gonna ensure that we have consistent impedance across all of these DDR traces on this internal layer. Now, below layer four, we have our ground plane on layer five. And as you can see here, the ground plane is also completely solid. So because both of those planes above and below those traces are completely solid, we won't have any impedance discontinuities that could then create reflections or allow for radiated emissions through the board edge. Now let's take a little bit of a deeper look at layer four here and maybe zoom out a little bit to see what else we have going on on this board. Now, what else do we have going on here? Well, on layer four, we also have some power routing. And we need to do that because, again, there are multiple rails on this processor. They're carrying significant current. We want to make sure that we have that plane capacitance for those rails. So we turn them into fat rails on both layer three and on layer four. And you can see that here as I switch between these layers. Now, there are other signals on layer four going over to the left side of the board. Now, some of these signals on layer four are routing over some splits in the power region. And you can see these splits here on layer three in yellow. However, these traces are all slower edge rate traces, and we do have ground on the adjacent layer on layer five. And because ground on layer five is close to layer four, we have strong coupling to that ground plane. We're gonna have much less radiated emissions from any of these signals routing over this split than we would if we were to try and route all these DDR signals over a split on layer three. So that's very important. The edge rate, once again, rears its ugly head and has a key role in determining how much radiated emissions we see from this type of routing. Now, we discussed some aspects of this in another video on routing over splits and power planes. So make sure to check out that video link in the description to learn more about routing over splits and power planes with strip lines. And as you're gonna see in that video, that the size of that split really is what matters and helps determine how much of an impedance discontinuity you see and therefore how much radiated emissions you might see from routing over that split. Now, last thing I wanna mention is that we are actually manufacturing this board right now and it's going to go into assembly soon. So when this board is completed, of course, we're gonna do a deep dive on it in another video and we'll go through and do all the testing on it and make sure it functions just like we expect an ethernet switch to function. So make sure to subscribe and you'll get notified when that video comes out. So in closing, how you handle EMI and EMC problems on a six layer board really depends on what you do with those internal layers. Those outer layers look a lot like what you would see on a four layer board with the signal ground ground signal stack up. However, those inner layers, depending on how you arrange them, could help you solve EMI and EMC problems. And it simply has to do with assigning layers to signal versus power and how you do your routing. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And if you leave a video request in the comments section, it just might take me two years to get to it, but I promise I'll get to it. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.